You're such an asshole. Asshole consulting. We go to the true opposite side of the globe, which is Australia, which we got a lot of mates down there. A young man writes, hey Aaron, greeting, greetings from Australia. I'm a 24-year-old Brisbane, not Brisbane, it is Brisbane for you septics. Ah, as you Australians think I didn't know that one. Eh? Uh, I'm a 24-year-old Brisbane guy attempting to unfuck my life. I'm a former leftist turned center-right minimalist looking to achieve financial independence and the fuck you status in the next 10 to 20 years. First, a little bit about my current situation. After almost having to go on welfare due to getting fucked over by a retracted job offer, it's good to see Austra corporate Australia is the same as corporate America. I went all out minimalist, sold my Suzuki Swift, and now I live out of a van and shower at a gym. Awesome, awesome. Though a hard life, it works great and saves me so much time every week from not commuting that I'm always trying new things to relieve boredom, including getting off my 98 kilo ass to exercise regularly for the first time in a decade. And now I walk or run 5.5 kilometers three times a week. That's good. Hang on. What's, what's 98 kilos? That's tied to him. It's 2.2. Oh, clear. You got 220, 218 pounds. All right. Yeah, you got, well, it depends on how tall you are, but you probably need to lose weight. <clears throat> I now work in a low-skill factory job with sensible bosses and currently looking for weekend work for extra cash and job security or IT training to allow me to work remotely. I currently have 6000 in debt that will be paid off uh, in January February of 2018. Unfortunately, due to a loan for the aforementioned Suzuki Swift, I applied for literally a month before reading about buying cars in bachelor pad economics. <laughs> oh, after these debts are eliminated, I will have a surplus of about 2270 per month. Uh, but saving this up and upgrading from my van to a mid-sized truck to live out of will eliminate certainly certain weekly expenses and also allow me to run diesel or even use veggie oil, bringing my monthly service or monthly surplus to around twenty three fourteen. I actually kind of have to admit, I admit, I uh, there's a piece of me that envies the van life. I was thinking about living in my car at the time, but I never really considered a van. And in Minnesota, it's really hard to do. But then again, I was an idiot in my twenties, and I didn't think maybe I'll move south. It's too expensive to live in Florida. I have no experience with women. At, well, not. I, I'd imagine not. You're in a van. And I've never been, never even dated due to being a spineless shit in my younger years. Not to mention you're a liberal pussy and it sounds like you're overweight. I don't want kids, but I do want a relationship eventually. But only after getting sterilized and ensuring that I cannot lose what I have to our fucked up marriage and de facto relationship laws. If this is too much to ask, I'm okay with remaining single as I've learned to live without companionship and know how hard it is to find a child-free, MGTOW-friendly woman. <clears throat> now on to my problem. Okay, I was, I, was, I was thinking like, oh, that might have been the problem. Our government has recently re legislated a retirement age of 70, making superannuation funds inaccessible until then. Assuming they do not confiscate it due to this, I no longer give a shit about conventional retirement and want to spend as much time as possible traveling the country with enough self-generating investment income to live on 1200000 per year. Combined with in location-independent work to hedge against problems like inflation, and then falling back on the principle to live off of, and why I'm too old to travel. I have things planned out to ensure that I never get bored with this lifestyle or fuck up budget-wise, but unfortunately I have no clue how to invest my money outside of safe options like high-interest savings account or term deposits at rates that barely beat inflation. <coughs> I've considered opening a an account with Vanguard Australia, but wanted to take on whether you think they are worth it. Among other options I've considered are buying a small property to rent out, but given your statements on the impending housing bubbles in Australia, I don't know if this is wise. Yeah, that's a problem. That It's it's not to say uh, that there isn't a house out there in that entire continent that would be a good fit for you, but boy, you're going to have to do some digging. You're going to have to find the right place. I've also considered joining the Army Reserves or signing on full-time, but I need to get fit first to pass basic. I know there are more options, but I've got no clue where to start aside from kids and not wanting to work until 70. I'm happy to reconsider any part of the strategy if it gets me out of the rat race. I understand you may not be able to give actual financial advice, so please just give me your recommendations or what you would do in my situation. Please let me know if you need any more information and let me know your price for a video response. I think there are a few people out there who would benefit from hearing your opinion on this. Cheers. I won't mention your name because it's kind of enough identifying information. Uh, well, here's the deal, dude. You you did pretty well and you did the hardest part and that is you have gone minimalist. Um, and you've gone so far minimalist, I wouldn't say to a bad extreme either. I'd say, you know, like I said, I kind of envy the van life. If you can live out of your truck and you got a surplus of 2314 a month, admittedly, this is Australian. Um, that's damn good. 
That is damn good for a 24 year old. Uh, <clears throat> I, I like your idea, but, and here's the thing, I can't give you specific investment advice, but if you're going to go kind of the um, Mr. Money Mustache, Early Retirement Extreme, those guys, which are books you may want to consider reading or read up on their sites, um, the goal is to get, you know, 400, 500K in the bank, and then you make your 5%, and then you live off of that, and you withdraw, or I'm sorry, you withdraw 5%, and there's like 3 to 8% growth per year to have to revisit the numbers. Um, and that's possible for you. That's possible. And I think it's, no matter which route you go, the, the key thing is that you have a, a huge positive monthly surplus. You're very young, so you have all the time in the world for this to work for you. Um, as long as you don't fuck up, it, it, I, I kind of like your plan. I kind of like your plan. Now, you can make it better. Um... You could join the military, but I hear that the Australian military is not as good or compensating as the United States military. You're making pretty good money now if you're taking home 2300 roughly, depending on whether you live in the truck or the van. Um, it, it's not. I know the people have said that the reputation, because uh, I only go based on what you Australians tell me, that there's not the um, social status and benefits that come from joining the military. But it's something you might want to consider especially if they have training programs, because right now, you, you know, you're working a low-skill factory job. Fine, nothing wrong with that. But you have to figure out something down the road to do when you're 50 and you can't do physical or manual labor anymore. So this, that could be a stint in the military. You got all the time in the world to do that. They'll pay for food, clothing, and shelter at least. Your expenses will go down. You could certainly start banking and saving away money. It might even be military for you. Uh, and plus, it'll give you something to do. Right now, you just sound like you sound like I'm a guy who lives in the van down by the river. You need you're gonna need some kind of social outlet. I think the military would probably be good for you. But yeah, you got, yeah, I don't know how tall you are, but you are gonna have to lose weight. And you should be losing weight anyway. But you're you're working on that right now. If you're running three miles, five point five kilometers, three times a week, so you th that that fat is gonna melt off here pretty quickly. Um, so in this regard, the world is your oyster. Uh, and so the military is one option. One other thing I would look at <coughs> is some kind of IT computer programming. You seem to have the wandering nomad vagabond mentality. Uh, you'd have to put that on hold if you joined the military. But I would try and get some kind of computer programming IT, some that will allow you to work remotely. Uh, maybe be an accountant. I know you maybe don't want to go back to school. Um, but you, you, and that's the thing is you need some kind of skill that's gonna that that when you are older you could rely upon, especially if you become, become incapacitated or the stock market goes down. This just it's just good to get your skills early on in life, so you're earning that extra pay over the course of the next four decades. Not oh I got a you know fifty eight year old American woman I'm gonna get my master's in business uh, health administration it's like well it's kind of too late don't you think I mean it's it's too late the time to do that was earlier on when it might have so um, what I'm saying is it, it depends and you, you've read bachelor pad economics or worth so you know the trades IT or stem some are going to require four-year degrees others hopefully you can just self-teach or teach yourself online or get certifications which I think is more your cup of tea but you're gonna to have to pursue it as regularly and consistently and religiously as you are you're working out. So you have the discipline with your with your working out and your incentive. It's just now you'd have to towards that towards academic trades or something like that. Maybe a trade school, you know, get your two year certification over whatever Australia has for trade schools. And then you know and then it's not oh I'm just I'm just low skilled factory worker. You're making more money, you're starting a master now whether you do that or not, you're still socking away 2300 a month. And that's damn good. It's only going to go up from there if you get skills on top of it. And then the real issue is, okay, what do you do with your money? And there's people like you who in 10 years' time, and I've had them as clients, they're like, okay, I've done this. Now I'm sitting on 400, 500,000. What do I do? Well, then you have several options. You can go with Vanguard um, or Fidelity. What, who, it doesn't matter. They're going to get you on your fees. <clears throat> you throw it into, you know, read early retirement extremes. It outlines it to you. It's very mathematical, very formulaic. Something you can read in your van. Um, and you, you live off of the interest and a certain minimal amount of principal reduction every year. You work until you're 60. 
I have a feeling you're going to be philosophically you're not going to you're not going to retire. I think most men, especially with your vagabond outlook, uh, we don't retire. You're going to have something to do. You're going to have to have something to do. So I think most men will work. Real men will work until they're dead. Uh, not in a slave-like way, but because we choose to. You're going to want to talk to people. You're going to want to hang out. You're going to want to do something. Uh, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, so that's one way you could do it. You could sock the money away now into a Vanguard fund or something like that. Uh, it slowly grows. You have compound interest, you know, the classical uh, retirement planning. Um and you'll get there sooner than the average person because I guarantee you most people aren't socking away 2300 a month into a retirement account. <clears throat> uh, the other thing that you might want to do is, is housing, but your concerns are the same as mine. Man, those housing prices are, are fucking whack. You guys are nuts paying for what you do and how. You guys are crazy because we got to live somewhere. Yeah, well, rent for God's sake. Uh, I think you're just brilliant living in a van. <laughs> And what I would do, sock away your money. I can't tell you what to invest in. Some people say if the conventional wisdom is to invest in indexed funds. And you understand that the, the, it, the stock markets are just like the housing markets globally almost, especially in Western nations. All that money that we keep printing off at our central banks has got to go somewhere. All these low interest rate loans have got to go and fund something. So it goes into education, which is why tuition is so high in the United States, healthcare costs, anything you borrow money for, houses, education, tuition, um, and stocks and bonds. It's just the, the, the rates of return right there. So every asset category is inflated, but I guess you got to park it somewhere. So I'd look at maybe inflation adjusted bonds. These are just options. You have to figure this out for yourself. Um, there's also the the line of logic. Well, they're just going to keep printing off money. So you might as well you know throw it in there because the stock market will keep going up. I'm like, well, look at the Japanese decay. They did that for 20 years and it didn't. Uh, so it lends me to say, if you can find the right house, buy it. Because this will do two things. One, as I mentioned before, will eliminate your need to live somewhere. It eliminates your need for lodging. Uh, now, you have a van for lodging, and this is kind of always your backup and reserve. And you could go, here's the thing, you go live in your van, and you rent it out to your buddies. And as long as the cash flow works, and that's the way to kind of tell if a property is undervalued or overvalued, can I rent it out and cover all the expenses, maintenance, repair, interest, uh, taxes, um, everything, everything that comes with owning a property and maintaining it? Uh, and then, you know, assuming we keep printing off money or populations keep growing or the Chinese keep wanting to flood the Australian market with money, hopefully, hopefully your, the value of your house doesn't go down. Let's just say hopefully it keeps up with inflation. It cash flows, it keeps up with inflation. Um, you have somebody else pay off your assets. I like the property because there is cash flow. You could control it based on the house you buy. Like that doesn't cash flow enough, that one that doesn't. Ah, this one does. And then it's always a place and asset that you can go and live. So if you can find a place that, you know, maybe a two bedroom that you could live in always in case times get tough, uh, or you can rent it out to two people. Some There's just a little bit more flexibility with property. But realize you face the same problem investing in property as you do the stock market. Everything's inflated. Dividend yields of 2%. Price to rents, you know, in the United States, thankfully, there's still a couple markets that are right. But Australia, God almighty, what do you do? Go buy it in the middle of the desert? I mean, maybe Perth, but even Perth, I'd imagine that's, that's on, anything on the coast has got to be inflated. So I would reread the chapter on housing about price to rents and all that other stuff. That would be very important before you start going and looking at housing. Otherwise, yeah, you got to put it somewhere, I guess. And if you fully understand if a stock market crash comes, the value of your investments are going to go down. That doesn't mean if you don't hold on to them, they won't recover down the road. But it, ultimately, in the end, you can outlast these things. And this is why I keep saying that your minimalism is your number one asset because you can survive it. You, 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 you take, you're living fine. You're living dirt cheap. The stock market and the housing market could do this. And you got 50 years before you look at retirement, or at least, what, uh, 45, 46. So you can handle a lot of ups and downs. Hopefully it doesn't go up, go down for the next 40 years and never comes back. I mean, it can happen, but it's statistically unlikely. So um, th that is another option. Maybe split it, have a housing fund. Have some go into Vanguard. Throw it all into Vanguard, but uh, make sure you can pull it out later to put a down payment or outright pay cash for a house. It it's there's there's uh, something to be said 
um, about that that house. I, I I would I'd say 55% house if you find the right one. That's the key thing. 45% stocks and they're not all stocks, but a well diversified portfolio of mutual funds. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, throw it into a, a well diversified portfolio of mutual funds. Hope for the best, you know. And then when it comes time to buy a house, hopefully they keep going up in value, and then you can pay cash for a house. But you cannot have your your cash just sitting in a bank account losing it to inflation. So I would, at minimum, look at inflation adjusted bonds over in Australia if they offer them. Um, and I would say, even before you start thinking about that, if it costs training for you to go to a programming boot camp, something to get to trade school, something like that's where I put my money first. Skill up, get a skill that you can carry with you for the rest of your life and make even more money than you are now. That's going to be that's uh, no doubt going to be the highest rate of return. After that, then maybe maybe start looking for a house, and in the meantime, throw your money into into a, a well diversified mutual fund. <coughs> um, do, 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 do. Recommendations over there. Yeah, that's what I would do. About about the only thing, and this has nothing to do with your financial questions. I, I make sure you get some kind of socializing going on. You know what? I know you're MGTOW. I know. I know. I know. You're 24 and you're a nerd. And uh, dude, you got to you got to get out into the real world. This doesn't mean you can't do it because you live in a van. Um, I'm not saying to chase girls, uh, but you got to go do something that you become you. Part of that journey is you living in a van and traveling around. That's awesome. That's totally awesome. Um, but I would start you know, working out. That's another great place to go. But then you need to have something else to feed your soul. I don't know. Maybe you like music. You can pick up guitar. Maybe you really take to computer programming. That can also be a passion. I know it sounds nerdy, but it can. But, you know, go drive your truck or your van. Go down by a beach and play volleyball with some people. Just just get a get some kind of social life going. Go take ballroom dance classes. Get, you can't just be sitting there in your van, working your job, making money, and then going to the bank account and dropping it off, and then uh, staying at home reading programming manuals. You need to get, and then where the uh, this is where the military might come in. It, you become you belong to something larger than yourself. Um, but something, dude. Some this could you go to trade school? They're gonna have social clubs. Um, you can hang out with people. Um, and, and I wouldn't worry about girls at all at this point, especially if you're overweight. Don't even bother with that. But you work on you and come up with a list of things you want to do. There's got to be community education classes. Oh, there's a community education class. Go there. And, oh, I want to learn how to make pottery. I want to I wanna learn how to shoot kangaroos. I don't know. Whatever you guys do down there in Australia. I want to... Uh, I want to learn to, to surf. Surfing is pretty big. And you're kind of the candidate for it. You can put the surfboard on top. You're living like you're the California kids back in the 60s. But that's that's something beyond finance that you're going to have to look into. But otherwise, you, it's a good start. It's a good start. It's just, man, the whole world is full of bubbles. And there's just no value out there. So really look at cash flow. Reread that section about housing and bachelor pad economics. I'd even maybe take some classes online or study online, read tutorials about rental property and the idea of cash flow. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that'd be another thing to consider reading so that you know the concept of cash flow. And you got time because you're going to spend the majority of your money on making sure your van works um, and tooling up on some kind of trade or skill or schooling. But by the time you're done reading and on the side researching about cash flow, investments, stuff like that, then you can revisit after you've paid for your education, what do you do with all this extra, uh, excess cash? But you're doing pretty good now. And you know what? You may feel like, oh, I'm not where I should be. You're 24, dude. Right now, every 44-year-old guy is saying, damn, I wish I drove around in a van when I was 24. So you're doing it right. You just don't know it yet. But... There's some things out there, particularly social life, they're going to come and bite you in the ass. So lose the weight, keep doing what you're doing, but go out and, and, and be social. Not, not romantic sexual social. You just want to find some buds and some mates to go hang out with and have a good time. And just chill and relax and be a cool guy. And then a lot of that other stuff will fall into place. And then let's revisit you buying property or, or stocks when it comes to that time. So, all right, you guys got questions. Australia or not, whether you could be, and as long as you speak English and you got money, go to assholeconsulting.com where I, America's older brother, the world's only professional asshole, will dispense his, his elderly brotherly wisdom not for free. We'll see you kids later. Toodles.